antlers, assumptions, and artillery. Sir, Cadet Reinhardt present and accounted for Sir, the Metak man says as Bjorn walks up with Holly by his side. He returns the salute with a grin. They're on a small mobile base with an open cabin near the foot of some hills. It's a fair distance away from the nearest arcology, so there's plenty of room for all kinds of entertainment. At ease, cadet. I'm here on protection detail for a rather curious civilian. Care to speak with her? Sir, yes, sir, the young Metak says with a salute. Ma'am, I am Cadet Reinhardt. It has been my pleasure to join the Undaunted. Today we have a training exercise with practical results. What's going on? Holly asks as she looks around the large vehicle that she and Bjorn had driven out to. Well, miss, we're going through a basic operation today. I get to be the spotter for the field artillery as we not only do a public service on the taxpayer's credit, but we start to level out the future location of the undaunted arcology. Cadet Reinhardt gushes and Bjorn nods. I heard about this operation, a nice little run to get you boys working together. Yes, but why are you using some of your biggest guns? Holly asks again. Tundra worms, miss. They've been breeding out of control and some of them have started crawling onto the stone feet of our colleges to hunt people. We need to cull their numbers so they don't need to climb up into our homes in order to eat. Cadet Reinhardt explains and Holly looks concerned. Is that common? Why are they breeding so out of control? Local pets, Holly. People love having their little friends around and a fair number of the fuzzy little menaces have escaped into the wild and started breeding. This creates a huge food source for the worms who begin breeding like crazy in response. Then they exhaust their food supplies and have to resort to climbing onto stone to find something to eat, Bjorn explains, before pointing into the distance. Look at the ground over there. The shaking means there's some kind of frenzy going on. Wow, you spotted that without any equipment. Thanks for indicating my target, sir, Cadet Reinhardt says before pulling out a device. All right, uploading targeting data, target locked, fire when ready. There's a thumping sound from the opposite side of the hills and Holly looks confused for a moment. Then she spots something moving fast just before it hits. The writhing ground in the distance explodes and chunks of gore go flying higher than the smoke. Target demolished! Holy crap! Look at the blood! Cadet Reinhardt cheers as many of the other junior recruits also start cheering at the side. Will you maggots calm down? That's just the first. There's more to come. A voice barks and a thin, angry man in a campaign hat steps in front of the group. Give me that? he says, all but snatching the rangefinder laser out of Cadet Reinhardt's hand. Now sit with the rest of the pukes, Cadet Magros, front and center. A Nagasha in a full body wrap and extra thick coat slithers forward. You're in charge of finding and ranging out our next target. I want to see bits of tundra worm flying twice as high as Cadet Reinhardt's little gimme from Sergeant Veers. Understood? Yes, Drill Sergeant. Then get to it, maggot. We don't have all day. Why is he so angry? Holly whispers to Bjorn. The drill sergeant catches it anyways. Why am I angry? Why am I angry? I'm angry because I have to whip these pukes into shape. I have to make military men out of a baby bat, a snake, two dogs, and a cat. Bjorn puts up his hand and then guides Holly a bit away. He's a drill sergeant. His job is to not only whip people into shape, a frustrating task by itself, but he's got to get them learning to work as a team as well as teaching them what the commands are and what to do in an emergency situation, which means they need something to glue them together and fear and hatred of the drill sergeant is a good place to start. So he's being the bad guy for them to team up against? Not quite, but not too far off. Like I said, his job is threefold. He needs to get them physically in shape, which, as you know, can be a tall order. Yes? Holly admits, getting people to follow through on their promises to do some more cardio or even take the stairs more often was a pain. 
Nearly every follow-up with a client, be it personal or part of a group, ended up with a rueful confession that they weren't following through. He also needs to get them used to taking orders, no matter how stupid as questioning an order at the wrong time can get people killed in the military. Understandable. Finally, he needs them to understand both the equipment and the actual commands. A soldier that can't put on and maintain their kit is just a problem and not an asset. And it's all on one man? No, there's about seven or eight drill sergeants per squad. It's just right now there's a small chunk of the squad here and this one sergeant is here with them to keep them in line. Where are the rest then? Likely helping set up the artillery. That's the weapon they're using, Holly asks, and both of them glance to each other and then lean out after hearing the thumping sound of the weapon going off. It is indeed, Bjorn replies just before another area of ground detonates and there are chunks of tundra worms sent skyward. They both lean back. Kinetic weaponry may have the downside of ammunition requirements, but since the ammunition is a physical thing that doesn't unravel, we can arc it over obstacles. The artillery is on the opposite side of the hill entirely. They can't see where they're hitting, but they're hitting anyways. This group is acting as the eyes. Holly realizes and he nods. Spotters and scouts, a useful skill set. Can I see the weapons? Holly asks and Bjorn nods. Sure, just let me call ahead. Remember the rule of being around the undaunted. Same as any military. Do not surprise people who are carrying weapons and being paid to use them, Holly says with a roll of her eyes. Exactly. It's especially true for cadets and trainees. They're way more jumpy than actual soldiers. What are those ranks anyways? Trainees are those who've just started. Cadet means we can trust them with equipment and to start field exercises. After that, they become privates when they just finish basic. Beyond that, it's corporal and then we start moving into the ranks of sergeants. Beyond sergeants, we have officers, although I can act to control an entire platoon. That's what first class means. I'm a senior, non-commissioned officer. I think we've had this conversation before. Oh, probably. It's a safe topic that can be used to fill the air. We've probably had this talk at least two or three times already. Bjorn notes and Holly suddenly grabs him and holds him close. Holly? I just... I... She says, holding him tightly. He opens his senses to the axiom. His branding prickles to his senses, but she... She's terrified. Terrified of loss or change. He turns around and returns the embrace. It's okay. You're okay. He begins before thinking. Yes, he thinks he knows what the problem is. Even if my assignment as your bodyguard ends, we'll still be together. We've come this far as one and I'm not the love them and leave them type. You promise? I promise. Good. Good. The doctor says I'm recovering, but, well, you don't have to tell me. The doctor said you're one of the main reasons. I, I just, you're afraid that if I was assigned elsewhere, you'd lose what you've made and regress? Yay, that and more, Holly admits. I've got your back. I can refuse deployments. Besides, we're building here on Zalwar. It's not too big a shift from sergeant to drill sergeant. So I'll be seeing you in those hats? Maybe. It'll take some training. Mostly on how to insult and intimidate a whole room without cracking up, but it's worth it. Thank you. I... I can crack rocks in my hands without axiom. I can go through most walls without bothering with windows or doors. I'm so strong, but... but I feel so weak sometimes. She mutters and he squeezes her a little harder. It's okay. I'm here. I gotcha. Bjorn assures her, and she lets out a shudder. I'm the woman, though. I should be the strong one to hold you up, not, not the other way around. Well, I'm the man. That says I should be the one helping you. So I guess we just have to help each other then. Bjorn states, and Holly lets out a bit of a chuckle. Deal, she says before nuzzling against him a little. Don't worry so much, all right? You've come very far from the girl in denial and are moving still. You're growing up. It's not a bad thing. 
I suppose, Holly says softly. There's another thump as another cadet spots another breeding ground followed by an explosion in the distance. What are launching those things? Light artillery from my understanding. Quick and easy to get into position but not made for a head-to-head -head fight. Bjorn answers before grinning. Want to see? I can tell them of our approach. I'd like that, Holly says, and they quickly get on to the cold weather hover vehicle. It was more convenient than using a snowmobile. The world for all its being a tundra was really light on the snow. In fact, most of the water on world was an accidental export from off of it. The arcologies had been slow burn terraforming the planet, making it more habitable over millennia. Of course, the downside to that is part of the reason the cadets are getting their artillery training in. The top-tier predators are the ones that are feasting the most on the spoils and need to be culled. Holly leans into him as he takes control of the vehicle and triggers the installed radio. Big guns, come in. Do you receive big guns? We have a friendly on approach. Do not open fire. I repeat, do not open fire. Confirmed, Mr. Friendly. We will not open fire. Get over here. A young-sounding voice replies, and then, before it cuts off, there's a bark of disapproval from the drill sergeant there. Well, someone's having a bad time for being too casual. Bjorn notes as he drives the vehicle well around the foot of the hill. A downside to a lot of low-level hover tech was that they did not deal well with potholes or boulders, often dipping dangerously or outright crashing into things if you weren't careful. But they were gentle on the environment to the point that the tundra worms didn't notice them, and any street with mostly hover traffic on it took a hell of a lot longer to wear down. They're tiny, Holly exclaims as they round the hill and she sees the mobile artillery. Yeah, that's part of the point. These are light artillery cannons, designed to get into strategic points and pound the ever-loving hell out whatever they're aimed at. Bjorn replies, Bigger guns mean you need to get bigger engines to move them if they're not an emplacement. Better to have a few smaller toys giving absolute hell to a weak spot than a bigger gun slamming uselessly against a hard point. You humans love to have things simple and to the point. Simple is a genius all its own. Few idiots ever win at war or life for that matter. Bjorn remarks as they fly up. A series of salutes are snapped at him after the drill sergeant reminds them to pay the sergeant his compliments. As you were cadets, we're just taking a look. Bjorn replies as he pulls up near them and sets the vehicle in park for lack of a better term. You heard the man. Get these guns loaded and singing. I want dead worms to paint the landscape. We're making art with gore. Yes, drill sergeant. Remember maggots. We are in the business of killing and business is good. The drill sergeant's enunciation of business as biz e niz nearly causes Bjorn to crack a grin, but he knows better than to do that around a drill sergeant. What's your assessment, sergeant? How are the cadets doing? Bjorn asks, just before one of the four light artillery guns fires off. We have had nothing but confirmed hits so far meaning that, at this rate, they might actually get to killin' something more impressive than an oversized maggot, and if they can't, then I'll kill him myself. Really? That's encouraging. I was worried the boys of the galaxy might be too much on the soft side to be molded properly. Only just sergeant. Only just, the drill sergeant says before looking at all the cadets around him. What are you gawking at? Get back to your guns, you stupid grunts.